So I had a small leak in this rain fly for my hammock here and I decided to fix it before it got worse. I also had a small leak in this tent over here and I decided to fix that at the same time. Want to know how I did it? I used a sponge brush and one of these. I guess sometimes you just get lucky. Stay with me and I'll show you how I did it. So I'm getting ready to do some motorcycle camping and last week I decided to pull out my equipment and shake it down, make sure everything was there and uh, not leaking. Since I had some weather coming up, I set my tent up and found out that indeed I did have a leak right there at the front around the vestibule and I assumed from where it was leaking um, that maybe some of the seams had lost their waterproofness so i decided since i also had a small leak on my hammock uh, rain fly that i would treat both at the same time as i had been reading up on how to do this the hammock was a little bit of a different story um, it wasn't leaking at the seam on the ridge line but from what i read uh, everybody was saying that they eventually do it was leaking from here one of the pullouts actually uh, two pullouts on one side had a small drip uh, nothing substantial but I figured that uh, I would go ahead and seal these pullouts and go ahead and seal the the seam at the ridge line too um, as preventative maintenance since these things are leaking already today on how it's made the technician gathers his materials and tools You'll be using a caulk gun, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits to keep the odor down afterwards, and caulk, 100% silicone caulk from GE. The technician then removes the factory cap from the tube of caulk, being very careful not to lose it like he did last time. He then pulls out a very sharp knife and proceeds to cut the tip off. Just the tip. No more. Just the tip. How dare you! He uses great care not to slice his finger open like he did last time. He then picks up the caulk gun and folds out a very sharp poker. This poker is used to perforate the factory seal inside the caulk tube to allow flow from the caulk gun. The now perforated tube of caulk is inserted promptly into the caulk gun twice. The push rod is inserted inside the tube of caulk and the trigger is squeezed to push caulk out of the tip. Just the tip. Once the technician decides where he wants to put his caulk, he picks up his caulk and puts the caulk inside the container. Gives it a few squeezes. Oh, yeah. Just like that, yeah. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. The technician releases the pressure and puts the lid back on the caulk for future use. Now the technician mixes mineral spirits into the container. A 50-50 mix. Half mineral spirits and half caulk. The caulk is then mixed thoroughly. The caulk does not mix very well so it takes a quite a good bit of time. And we'll now speed up this procedure so as not to bore you to tears. It's really interesting to watch but I don't think you want to watch for the next 15 minutes of me stirring caulk. But at least you get the idea of how long it takes. It takes a long time. It takes a really long time. Here I am speeding up now. Really speedy. Maybe I am this fast. Maybe I'm just a really fast stirrer. You'll never know. If I had it to do over again, I would put the lid on this container and just shake it up. That seemed to work really well on the third attempt. Um, yeah, I didn't actually use this container to shake it up, but I used a squirt gun. I'll show you that in a little bit. 
but you can vary the thickness. Um, I didn't want it to be very runny, um, and this worked out really well. I had a couple of runs, um, but it went on really easily um, and pretty quickly. Uh, I had to speed this up because I know you don't want to sit here and watch this stupidity, but here I am sealing the seams in the rain fly because that's where I suspected the leaks were coming from. That's everything that I read. Uh, everybody was saying uh, any, anywhere uh, a thread goes through the, uh, the rain fly or a tarp, um, in other words, the seams, uh, those were the places that leaked. So I mixed up another batch and I headed over to the tarp. Uh, this is the rain fly for my hammock, so um, I thought it was really important. Uh, number one, get the trial and error over on the tent. Uh, I don't really depend on that that much. But I really need to make sure that this rain fly tarp does not leak. And it had uh, some small leaks. It wasn't leaking from the, from the um, ridge line, but it was leaking from these pullouts here. And I wanted to make sure that I've got those uh, really good. If, uh, if I had it to do over now, I think I probably would have done both... Uh, uh, the the pullouts and the ridge line from the inside because that's where all the um, all the actual stitches are um, at least you can see them I think that would have worked just fine um, you may be real touchy about how your stuff looks I just didn't want a bunch of spots on mine um, and I didn't really see any spots but you can tell that the there is a little bit of difference in the shade of color um, on this tarp so uh, just an FYI if you're real particular about how your stuff looks so I went over and used the leftovers from the hammock fly uh, to coat the base of the tent uh, I wouldn't really call this a leak but being exposed to water it typically seems like it's always been damp at least damp or wet it doesn't uh, spill into the tent but I thought well you know if I ever uh, rub up against that with a bag or the sleeping bag gets uh, exposed to that then that could be a problem so I figured I've got some extra I'll just go ahead and seal it and then sit back and wait for it, every all of it to dry and see how it performs Later on that evening, the heavy storms rolled in and we got a good wash and uh, I was able to see that the coating on the seams, um, uh, at least on the, uh, the vestibule, didn't work. The sides, however, <laughs> sealed up very well. So I was determined um, to, once the tent dried out, I was going to come back and completely coat the rain fly. And uh, I didn't want to paint the whole thing, so I wound up spraying it and um, just had to mix it a little bit thinner. But that was the, uh, the rain fly on the tent. Um, I just underestimated where the leak was. The uh, hammock tarp, however, uh, worked amazing. It was perfect. Um, I only had two leaks on that side right there, uh, right there on that pullout and the other pullout. Um, but I was really impressed. I thought I saw some drops uh, coming through, and that's basically what it was. It was just kind of seeping through. It wasn't running. Um, but uh, the, what I thought I saw was just a uh, reflection, and I uh, had to actually put my hand on it. But um, before I resealed this thing, I wanted to make sure that the where the water was coming in on the tent, and it's kind of hard to... Uh, to see so I just assumed it was probably going to be the whole rain fly in the front and maybe that's where most of the wear uh, comes on these tents um, but you can see uh, it it didn't really do much of anything you can see the water's coming in right there which is right over my feet <laughs> so I mixed up another batch and uh, this time I squeezed it into a, a little sprayer and the mixing was much easier this time because I wasn't stirring. I just shook it until it dissolved. It, I would say it took, it was a little bit faster shaking it and a whole lot easier. Um, but it still took some time for the, uh, for the uh, silicone to dissolve in the, um, 
mineral spirits. But I uh, mixed it really, really thin because I was afraid that the stuff might get stuck on the inside of the, the squirt bottle, um, either in the tube or in the spray mechanism itself. So really thin, um, but I put on a pretty good coat. And this time, as it turns out, it worked perfectly. No drops, no nothing. And I was really excited to, to see that that, that actually worked. Um, I did coat um, this little uh, sack that I put. I just wanted to do some testing and I wanted to see if it actually worked. And dipping this in, uh, I think this was the second batch that I used. So it's pretty thick, but I just uh, dipped it in and coated half of the bag just to see. I wanted to fill it up with some water and that's what I wound up doing. So shockingly, you can see um, that the difference in the, the color, it's a little bit brighter above where I put the uh, silicone sealer on. And you can see there's a pretty solid line there. But the shocking thing is that this is rainwater from a, a week ago when I treated the thing. And it held all the water that was in there from the, from the storms and it held it pretty good. So to think that it's that good, um, I would strongly recommend uh, using this technique if, uh, if you have some problems or issues. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Um, there are some uh, off-the-shelf uh, solutions. I can't remember what they're called, but they're basically sealers. It's the same uh, idea. It's the same gunk. Um, the, the only difference is you mix this up yourself, and it's a lot cheaper, and it's a lot more volume. Since I had um, the both the tent fly and my hammock fly to treat I decided I wanted the volume I didn't want to order a 15 18 20 dollar tube of probably it may have only treated the uh, one of the tarps it certainly wouldn't have uh, wouldn't been able to squirt all that over um, the entire surface of the tent and uh, so I was really pleased with it and I'm always doing odd stuff like this anyway uh, doing it the uh, the other way rather than the proper way but I did want to uh, save this tent um, I didn't want to toss it away I'm not uh, much of a consumer uh, of new products if I can fix or improve the the tent that I've got then uh, then that's what I did and this tent's been on a lot of trips with me and uh, kind of got a kind of got a little warm spot in my heart <laughs> i know that sounds crazy but i like equipment that i can count on and uh so far this tent has held up really really well i've been really impressed with it so when i went shopping for tents i uh, decided that i would be better off spending my money on um, equipment to help me camp in a hammock during the winter rather than uh, replacing the tent that i really i don't like uh, I don't like camping in tents anymore. I guess I'm getting old. But um, if you if you want to see more reasons why I gave up the tent uh, camping and the whole idea of tent camping as a rule, I've got this video here. Uh, check that out if you haven't seen it. And I, I did another video about uh, camping in a hammock. Motorcycle camping in a hammock is the way I want to uh, go now. And I did that video, and I've probably got a couple more coming up. Uh, more details about hammock camping and how you can do it in winter if you want to. Anyway, check those out, and I'll see you on the next one.